Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Titsa Lab, and in this video we're going to be looking at the brilliant work of Professor F.S. Lewis, Weaponless Defence, The New Science of Weaponless Defence. Uh, this book has only recently come to my attention, and it is awesome. Now, why is it awesome? Well, uh, Frank Lewis is a champion wrestler, so he had 400 wrestling bats, 63 boxing matches, and he's made a guide where, unlike other manuals of the time that are boxing or wrestling and have the moniker, you know, the gentlemanly art of self-defence, you know, self-defence, blah, 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 a lot of those books are, when all said and done, boxing as boxing is done in the ring or for the ring. So whilst, yes, they're very conducive to self-defence, in reality, you're learning ring boxing of that particular era. What I really like about Professor Lewis's work is that he has gone bare knuckle he has focused on street self-defense and he's applied the wrestling and the boxing in a way that factors in things like street weapons so unlike many of the guides that are more cane based or a little bit more effect you've got knives you've got short bludgeons you've got street weapons as you'd find them today so you've got this highly experienced combat sports athlete teaching a street orientated methodology and this man has genuine credence in the game. And he's factoring in multiple opponents, street weapons. So this is way ahead of its time. It's very well shot. It's very clear. It's very concisely explained. It is, but also just fantastic. It's a fantastic book. And I'm going to go through just some of the elements of uh, Professor Lewis's work. Obviously, because it facts in wrestling and we're still living in the apocalypse, there's not much wrestling I can show you from his work. But do make sure you get it, but I'll show that once the world opens up again. But I'll go through some of Lewis's striking and some of the things that are a little bit different than the other self-defense or the other noble art orientated books of the time. Buy it. Absolutely worth the 10 quid you'll spend on it. So one peculiarity of Professor Lewis's work is his blocks. Now, a lot of the blocks at the time for pugilism were forearm based, down low, up high. You get some sort of parries and covers. You get covers, parries, and these hard traditional blocks that you see in early pugilism. Professor Lewis has people blocking, or I should rather say deflecting, using the soft inner part of the forearm. So where you might have an upper block like yay in pugilism, Professor Lewis will have it so that his palm is facing out and he's riding the shot along this bit. Uh, many of you, if you follow Asian martial arts, you might be familiar with something like a bong sao. Again, it's not quite a bong sao, but it is to deflect or to ride the technique. So he's using this relatively soft portion to roll the shots. And it's palm based, so palm down low, palm down low, palm up high, palm up high. Why might you do that? Well, if you think about this man, he's a prolific wrestler. Wrestling is his base. And if he's rolling this here, so let's say he's rolling against that shot, having his hand open and keeping the motion coming forward boom, allows him to grip and seize and grapple really easily. He can roll and seize. After which point then, if he's rolled and he's seized, we can move into strikes from a position of attachment, bang, which is much easier. Boom, boom. Or we can just move on and wrestle him because we've already got the grapple. He's struck, we've deflected, we've grappled, and I should hopefully attain the victory. So again, these softer, kind of rolling, open-handed blocks of Lewis are really conducive to either street striking from an attachment, bang, bang, or street grappling. So again, very interesting, nuanced way. We've got Professor Lewis's safety block. So his safety block is essentially thus. He will turn and cover. So he'll bar himself with one hand. He will use his shoulder, the meat of his shoulder to cover his jaw and the hand for extra surety. So from either direction, we end up with this. Not too dissimilar from the Philly shell. And obviously from here, let's say a grip's taken place. I can keep myself safe and then explode. Or I can, at range, take a boxing shot from here, bang, and then explode. Or 
I can take a shot from the safety stance and then crash in for my underhooks for a grapple. But either way, turning, barring, and using the hand is important. But important note, it's not just the hand that's protecting the jaw. You'd be foolish to think that a hand here would stop the percussive impact of a punch. It's the shoulder's job to protect the jaw. The shoulder is stopping my brain being shook, not the hand. The hand is just extra surety against facial damage. It's the shoulder that keeps me safe. So even if I forgot to put the hand there, you, you take the shot on the shoulder, not on the jaw, on the hinge of the jaw. On, on from either side. It's the shoulder's important job. Other extra elements. So in the Professor Lewis system, if I'm slipping to the outside of a punch here, so my head's going outside, the shot that goes down the middle is with a vertical, uh, with a horizontal fist. Slip and punch with a horizontal fist. Slip and punch with a horizontal fist, which feels more natural because the range is extended. If I'm going to the outside of a shot, this horizontal fist feels more natural. Nice solid shots. And I can also go straight up the pipe. If he is slipping to the inside of a shot, let's say his left's coming, his head slips, he fires a vertical fist. Now why might he fire a vertical fist? Well when he's on the inside of the shot, he's still in a danger zone. But when you fire a vertical fist, often your shoulder will cover your jaw. So if I'm slipping to the inside of his right hook, wham, and firing in that vertical fist shot, my shoulder gives me added protection. So if I'm slipping to the inside, just a little, just a little, just a little, so I'm moving my head inside the punch. This is the most direct means to hit him, and it keeps me safe around the outside. So it's a very intuitive street orientated system as it factors in the hands being a lot less bulky than the gloves. You know, the gloves at the time were very small anyway, but even so, it covers the gaps. So slipping to the outside, horizontal fist, slipping to the inside of the shot, vertical fist. Nice and simple, very, very cool. What you also see is very prolific use of the palm stop. Now with the palm, again, we're looking at a system which synthesizes wrestling and boxing for street self-defense. And what Professor Lewis does is essentially he stuffs techniques before they happen to him. So he'll shove hard on the left or the right shoulder with his palm. And again, Jack Johnson and many early boxers were buggers for this. They'll either shove you and hit you, or they'll just keep applying pressure so they neuter the ability to do that shot. Have someone much smaller and weaker than you shove hard on your shoulder when you try and punch. Even with a disparity of force, you getting hard shoulder shoves makes though an decent shot just an absolute bloody nightmare. So whether it's the same side shove or a cross shove, I quite like a cross shove, bang, because it covers my head one side from punches and then I can fire my own. So I cover myself from his big right hand, which is likely to be his street weapon. So I've turned him just a little and smashed in something else. So that cross shove or that same side shove is really quite a cool technique. Or what he'll do, assuming that the opponent's got a guard up, is he'll neuter that hand by placing his on top. So he'll just stuff where your hand is. If you've got a decent guard, he'll put a hand over the top, just stuff it. So he'll either stuff your shoulder and hit you, cross stuff your shoulder and hit you, or touch the top of your hands, top of your gloves, to get hand, you know, you think about his wrestling background, hand fighting's really key. So he's essentially applying hand fighting and then pugilism. Hand fighting and then pugilism. It's fascinating. Then we can look at some other things. So he's got some very good work in his dirty boxing, his kidney hooks. So again, he comes round with a almost a Slavic esque thumb down motion right into the kidneys. And this can be at range, bang. Well, up close. Either way, he uses this to sneak around the back of the opponent. Kidney punches. Lovely, lovely, nasty shots. Very nasty shots. 
He's very prolific in his time for his shoulder parry. So you saw, saw the safety guards. You know, it's one of the earliest mentions we see of people shoulder stopping. So Professor Frank is shoulder stopping and using that to load up a shot. Cover, shot, cover, shot. Which is really good because it matches the natural flinch reaction of shit, something's gone my way, whether it's a bottle being thrown, a punch, whatever. I've gone shit, covered with my shoulder, which has wound me up. Whoop! for the next shot. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. What you also see is um, Professor Lewis's work when it comes to simultaneous blocking and hitting. Now, doing this or doing this is very common in historical pugilism. What Professor Frank does, obviously remember his type of guard, something like this. He will throw it even if a punch isn't incoming. So you've got here, and now you've essentially got a decent half-arm shot because the arm is halfway out to delivering something else. So one, two. Uh, it's essentially a hit and a half, and you see other boxers of the time do it too. So as opposed to receiving and countering, so you time it, you cover and you hit. In this instance, we're throwing it proactively because I'm safe from one side, because my shoulder's raised. So the punching side of my face is safe. The non-punching side of my, safe, my face is also safe because I've blocked as a matter of principle. So I've already driven in this way, and it just means that I've got more weapons into the target at the same time. We're not boxing for rounds. I want to absolutely asymmetrically beat fuck out of them. So if I go, whoom, whoom, or whoom, whoom, my hand is already en route, keeping me safe, and I can just plough that into the opponent. So again, proactive simultaneous hitting, as opposed to reactive simultaneous hitting, is really quite a cool and interesting concept for Professor Frank. It might be down here, bang, and then I go straight into an underhook. Boom, whoop, and I've achieved the grapple. So starting your journey out like so is a really cool way to have a two-fisted or two-handed offense against the opponent, keeping you safe, but making sure that you're offensive at all times, which is really, really very important. So those are some of the kind of signature techniques of Professor Lewis. There are many, many in here. The book doesn't fanny around. It goes straight into the material. Huge, huge number of pictures, scenarios, weapons, wrestling, boxing, synthesizing them together absolutely recommend you buy the book give it a go have a play because for my money it's one of the most holistic pieces of unarmed historical european martial arts we've ever had very cool give it a go